Hey guys, what's going on? It's Pete 23 back with another video. And today, we're doing something a little bit different. No, we're not going to be doing ranked seasons. No, not Battle Royale, not events, not moments, not conquest. We are going to be doing a rating episode where I am telling you guys my top three most underrated cards at each position. I think this will be a little bit fun, something different, and maybe this will help you out with, um, you know, maybe some new cards you want to use in BR or events, or maybe even your own team, who knows? Kicking it off at starting pitcher, we got Oliver Perez. This guy is really, really good. If you need a budget starting pitcher, this is your guy. He's got a funky rotation. He's got some pretty solid stats, to be honest. And he's just an overall really, really good card that you might want to have in your rotation. The next guy is Masahiro Tanaka. I don't feel like a lot of people talk about him because, you know, he's just an 81 gold. So what? I feel like he's got such a weird delivery and such a nice splitter and sinker that this card can actually be pretty dominant if you can hit your spots. And once again, this is for budget teams or events. If you're looking at another really good guy that has, like, good pitch mix, I, I would take maybe Masahiro Tanaka. And my third and final pick for the starting pitchers is going to be this Silver Max Scherzer. I feel like this is a really dominant card to get in events because it doesn't kill you overall. But like if you're playing a six inning event, you might want a decent starter. And this might be a good guy for you. He's got a good pitch mix. You know, he's got a good release. You know how to use him. But he's a silver. So I think that really works out. Relieving pitchers, I feel like a lot of people know about him, but I'll, I'll mention him again. Adam Ottavino, this dude's very, very good. He's got a really weird, funky delivery. Literally any righty who he faces is doomed. This card is amazing. Then we got this Tony Watson who came out pretty recently, but I don't think I've seen him been used once. It's not a bad card at all. It's a really good lefty. He can be used in ranked seasons. I mean, like, this card is good. He's pretty much the opposite of uh, Ottavino. This is your lefty specialist. Another funky delivery. Good card. Now, I believe this guy is going to be the only common on this list, and that is Peter Moyland. If you do not know, Peter Moyland has one of the glitchiest releases, and this is not a bad event card. If you want to put someone in there to put your overall down, but if you need to use him, you can. This card is not bad. I actually recommend you try him. This is a really good card. Heading into the closing pitchers now, we got AJ Ramos. I think he's a really glitchy to overly. That's just me. He's a great card. He's got great break, 99 break. He's almost got 99 on his hits per nine and Ks per nine, pretty much. He's just a little bit inaccurate, but I'm telling you, if you hit your spots, this card is a beast. Now we're going to go down to the bronze right here, Lee Smith. Now I know he doesn't have a diamond card yet, I'm assuming he will, but right now, if you like Lee Smith, this bronze isn't a bad idea for an event. He's got the fork ball, I mean, he's got a good pitch mix. This is not a bad card to throw into your lineup. And, fi and finally, I'm going to give the third spot in closing pitching to David Robertson. I don't see a lot of people talking about this card or even his diamond, but this gold is a nice cheap um, alternative to the diamond if you don't want to go after it. I like this card a lot. I loved it last year. He's got the same release this year. He's just he's just a beast. On to the hitting side of things. We're going to catchers first, and the first one up is Benito Santiago. I think a lot of people do know about him, but I'm mentioning him again first off because if you don't, you need this guy. He's a great gold with great fielding. He's got diamond fielding. Arm strength with 94, he's got decent vision, decent contact. This is a card that's really good for a budget squad or maybe like a BR run. This is the guy you want. Then we're going to go down a little bit to the silvers and we got this Kurt Suzuki who I seem to really like. I don't know, I, I really like cards with vision this year and 88 vision is really, really nice. Every time I've used him in BR, he's been really good. I feel like um, he's that vision is so powerful. He's got decent fielding. I mean, it's not the best. Um, but he's definitely a really solid guy. He's up on inside edge a lot. It's a good card to pick up. And now here's the surprise one. I don't think anyone saw this one coming. Kavan Smith. Yeah, this is a 72 overall bronze who I like to use when I really need to low my overall and it needs to be a hitter. This is the guy I like to take. He's got good vision and good contact. Once again, these things really work together. Uh, I like this card. It's actually not a bad card. He's got 42 speed. It's an all right card if you need to use him. On to the first baseman, I'm going to give it to Jose Abreu, and I know his fielding isn't great, but this card can hit. I learned that yesterday. He's up, look, at, look at that inside edge today. He's up to an 84. He's got good vision. He's very balanced. This is a nice bench bat. This might be a good starting bat for an event. I really like Abreu. Now, I know a lot of people might not... Next up is Josh Bell, who's been doing really, really good uh, IRL, so his card obviously reflects that. He's been up on inside edge a ton. He might be upgraded to gold soon, so if you want, I would grab this card really soon. He is at like a 1,000 stubs right now because people know about it, so 
maybe try and pull him i don't know but this is a really good card nonetheless then we got brandon belt coming in at the third spot i, I really really like brandon belt he's got a nice fluid swing he seems to just crush people if you square it up this is a nice card with gold feeling too so you know you can't go wrong with brandon belt at second base, I'm going to talk about this brand new D Gordon. A lot of people are saying this new event isn't worth it. It's not worth the grind. This card is really, really good. I don't think a lot of people realize that. This card's got really nice contact and really good vision. He reminds me a lot of like Ichiro, to be honest, uh, with his speed and contact and stuff. This is a really solid card. If you need to bench bat or something, he could be a beast. And he also sells for 10k. That's a lot of stubs, so do your events, guys. Next up is this Devon Travis, lefty killer. Uh, he's out right against righties. I mean, they gave him diamond uh, hitting. He's got uh, solid. He's got solid speed. This is a pretty solid card, I'd say, off your bench. He's a lefty specialist. If you want to platoon him with somebody, this is your guy to face the lefty. Now I'm going to talk about someone you probably did not expect. That's right, Starlin Castro. Look at these stats, man. I have had some nice experience with this card. Batting 340. Now, this was some Diamond Dynasty when I, you know, just started, like, the first few days. And then some BR. I really like this card. If you're for if you're forced and, like, you need a second baseman in BR and you're like, ah, it's a bronze round. And you get this guy, you gotta take him. He's really, really good. I This is, might be the one of the most underrated cards this year. He's definitely up there. Going over to third base, we cannot forget Matt Chapman with his 99 fielding. Fielding is huge this year. This dude doesn't make a lot of errors, or if any. He's a solid hitter. I mean, not today with his inside edge, but he's still really solid if you need a fielder on the event and you need a, uh, a righty. Matt Chapman, he's your guy. Josh Harrison is next up on this list. This is a guy I batted with a while, and I know you're like, wow, 284. I'm telling you, this card is still really, really good. Uh, I use him a lot in ranked, which is why his average is lower, because, you know, I'm facing diamonds. But if you want to use this guy in events, or, hey, if you want to bring him into ranked, bring him into ranked. He's still really, really solid. Good vision, contact, and speed. I love that combo. And then, I think a lot of people forgot about this card. You know, the, the moment he turned silver, a lot of people forgot about Matt Carpenter. But honestly, he's still up to a gold a lot of the time on Inside Edge. His um, stats didn't change too much. This card is still really, really good, and I recommend him still. He's very, very good. He's got a nice swing. He's been a beast for me, and I've been using him in the event. Going over to the short... Going over to shortstop, you guys have to pick this card up. Xander Bogarts is an absolute beast. Yeah, that's right. You see it. 489. This card is insane. I absolutely love using this card. Uh, fellow Red Sox, he's, I think he's the first one on this list, if I remember right. Uh, he's really, really solid. I mean, his stats don't look crazy, but they're pretty they're pretty fine. You know, he's a good fielder. He's a good hitter. This is a really, really good card. Next, we're going to have to talk about a Yankee. I know. D.D. Gregorius. He's a really, really solid guy. I liked using him in events as well. Ooh. Next guy is D.D. Gregorius. I really liked him. I liked his vision, and I liked the way he squared things up, honestly. He, he seemed to be really solid whenever I used him. I didn't start him in events or anything, but... The times when I got to him, I think he was really solid. Now we're going to talk about a bronze, Jose Barraza. I really, really learned how good this guy was when I did my Reds MTO at the start of the year. He's got a really nice swing. He's got good vision and speed. He's a pretty solid guy off the bench or even, I don't know, maybe leadoff guy in events if you need someone like him. He's pretty solid. We're now heading to the outfield. It's left field. Michael Brantley. There's nothing about to say. Michael Brantley's an absolute beast, man. He just rakes. I love that 91 vision. He's up on the day, always a good fielder, a really solid choice for left field. I don't think we can all forget Jock Peterson. I mean, there's Joey Gallo, there's Chris Davis, and I feel like we cannot forget Jock Peterson. He's just as good. He's got great. He's got great power against righties. That's what he's there for. He hits bombs. This is a great guy for BR. I think a lot of people knew that, but just to let you know if you didn't, this dude hits bombs. And now here's a guy I don't see a lot of people talking about, Brett Gardner, a good fielder with speed and solid vision. Like I said, those combos go well together. This card is really, really solid. I like his swing. He's a good fielder. I'd pick him up if you can. Going into center field now, I can't, I cannot talk about Harrison Bader. I like this card. He's a good speed guy off the bench if you just need him for that purpose. But he's also not the worst hitter. I've used him, I think, yeah, about a thousand with him. I only had, like, one opportunity. It was a grand slam. Um, but anyway, this card was really, really solid. Um, the times I've used him for speed off the bench and stuff. But, uh, yeah, if you need a speedy guy, you can also kind of hit. His stats, 
He plays above his stats, I'm telling you that. Next, we got a guy who literally plays every position, Chris Taylor. He's always up on the day. He's one of those guys, man. He's just, he does everything pretty solid. His vision is kind of on the low side, but if you're using him in BR, he, he'll be great for you. He can play literally everywhere. And the last guy's gonna be Keon Broxton, another one of these diamond fielders that has great speed and solid. You know, you look at him, you know, he's got 19 vision. Honestly, he plays better than that, in my opinion. I like this card. I'd get him on your bench if you can, if, you know, and he happens to pop up in your BR round. I'd, I'd take him, he's not bad. Heading into right field, I gotta put Babe Ruth on this list. I just, I just learned yesterday how good this card was. He's got the Babe Ruth swing, it's really cheese. This is the best card, honestly, I think of Babe Ruth that's out right now. I know there's a diamond, but this is the hitter one, so this is the one I'd say, if you like Babe Ruth, pick this card up. It's not bad at all, he can definitely hit. He's not gonna disappoint. And then in right field, we got Shohei Otani. Um, I got this card at the beginning of the year as my gold reward. And I've liked his swing. I've liked his swing for a while now. You can see I've had some, quite some experience with him. Still batting 368. He's a good event card. He hits righties and lefties, even though his stats, they say it's righty. But no, he hits both. He's a good fielder. He's a solid option in right. And then this is someone I might put at like the number one most underrated card of the year. Adam Jones. Look at this. 527 average on 57 plate appearances. This card is insane. I don't know why, man. I love his swing. I really, I, I want to try out the diamond, but I, I can't, yes, I can't really, I don't want to, it's a lot of stubs, but this silver is definitely worth it, this is such a good card. Alright guys, so that is three players now from each position, and before we're going to end the video, I'm going to give you the top three now most underrated cards of the year from that list. Number three from the whole list is Peter Moyland. I, I'm telling you, no one knows about this card. I don't, I don't, I haven't used him too much, but I'm telling you, he's tough to face. This is a good, good card to pick up if you need a common in your bullpen. This is the guy. He's unbelievable. I'm telling you, no one knows about him. He's a secret stud. Number two on this list, Starlin Castro. Yes, I'm putting him at number two. This card's super, super good. I like his swing. He seems to get a lot of bloopers, honestly. He's kind of like a Kenny Lofton to me. Very, very solid. Obviously, he's got 54 speed, but he's going to be good for you. I'm not, I'm not lying. This card's very, very good. And the number one most underrated card, I'm going to have to give it to Adam Jones right now, guys. I, this card's so good. I cannot lie. He's just unbelievable for me. I love his swing. I don't think he's got common fielding. He seems to be fine in the field. Don't worry about that. This card's really, really good. I'm going to give him that number one spot because of it. And yeah, guys, that's going to do it. That's our list. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you're going to try out some of those cards. And uh, maybe give me your top three in the comments below of who you think the best underrated cards are. And yeah, that's going to do it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.